Welcome to May's edition of The Archery Show. There's now just a month until 128 of the world's best archers compete for Olympic glory in Japan. And we can't wait to see how the games play out. Six countries added quota places for the Olympics at the recent European qualification tournament. Those results, coupled with the official withdrawal of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea from Tokyo, leaves the total number of countries qualified for the Games at 41. There's just one last chance to win spots, and that comes later this month in Paris. As well as athletes fighting for Olympic qualification, over the last month we've seen some fantastic performances from archers with potential to climb the Olympic podium. The breakout results are headlined by Lisa Barbaland and Pablo Acha taking European titles in Antalya. Plus, Brady Ellison returning to form at the Hyundai Archery World Cup stage in Lausanne. And of course, there's Tanya Gelantin's ascendance to the number one spot in the world rankings following three consecutive major podiums. Coming up in this program, we've talked to Thomas Schirau about his quest to win an Olympic quota. And there's a look at the innovative new way that World Archery is broadcasting international events in 2021. But first, with the weather in Tokyo promising to be hot, we take a look at what matters when shooting in sweltering conditions. Yeah, the, the most important point is to, to have a perfect shot. You can shoot if it's cold, if it's hot, but the perfect shot in the hot weather is is not like a normal shot, you have to focus totally. Yo a, lo, a los arqueros no le digo especialmente nada como tienen que cambiar de un sitio a otro, solo que tengan preparada la ropa, que tengan preparada la gorra, eh, las gafas, todo lo que necesitan en función de, de, de cómo yo preveo que va a estar el tiempo, nosotros solemos chequear, pero me gusta que a todas las competiciones vayan preparados absolutamente para todo, que realmente su mente esté tranquila de sea cual sea la circunstancia que vayan a competir. Yeah, sun cream. Sun cream is very important. Uh, I usually take 20, maybe 30. Uh, I know someone that takes 50, but uh, I'm, I'm usually fine with 20 or 30. I wear sunglasses because uh, they, they are very good for me. They were good because they change the darkness. Uh, also because I don't see good enough to not, uh, be, to not uh, shoot without the glasses. It is more difficult because here in Turkey it's very high UV, so it really protects my eyes. I always had red eyes in Turkey and now with these glasses it's the first time I don't have uh, red eyes. And most of the time I prefer to shoot in, in, in long shirts um, because I feel more, more, more shape. If you feel thirsty it's too late, so I always try to drink more than and I shoot every end, uh, I, take, uh, I take a little bit of water. I, I really need to drink a lot of water, sometimes I forget it, so my coach always told me drink more. I think in a qualification round about five bottles. Se han hecho muchos estudios y cuando el cuerpo empieza a tener un 2%, un 5% de deshidratación, se ha visto que el, que, el, que el cerebro no rinde igual. En un deporte como este, que es verdad que la parte mental influye muchísimo, la concentración, en el momento en el que el, eh, el cuerpo se empieza a deshidratar, si la concentración empieza a bajar, al final influye en la técnica. ¿En qué parte de la técnica? Bueno, pues depende de cada uno, pero sobre todo en el tema de la concentración. Obviously, you sweat a little bit more than usually, so maybe grip is a little bit more slippy, tap is a little bit more slippy, but I, I try to, to dry my hands if you're sweating and not get my tap too wet also if I sweat a lot. I love to shoot in the sun and in the heat. I think it depends if you're a hot, hot kind of person or not. I prefer sun than uh, cold or rain. Um, I think with this temperature it's, it's okay, it's not too hot about 27 degrees, it's, it's totally okay and it's better than rain and cold weather, I think. 
que en el material no afecta mucho, pero en la sensación del deportista sí que afecta mucho. Parece una tontería, pero la sensación del deportista cuando está tirando, cómo le cae el sudor por la espalda, al final hace que su atención esté en eso y no esté en su tiro, con lo cual al final eso cambia. Con lo cual, cuanto mejor puedas preparar las condiciones que va a tener luego la competición, en mi opinión es muchísimo mejor. Cualquier circunstancia, que su mente esté tranquila de sé que estoy preparado para todo. They say necessity breeds creation, and this year we've been forced to do things differently to ensure major archery events can still be broadcasted. I'm Mark Feakin. I work for QTV. I'm the producer of World Archery's TV coverage. A lot's changed this year, um, as everyone knows, having limited to no travel, we've had to adapt and be flexible to help World Archery, you know, achieve successful production and, and distribution of their TV productions. Usually pre-COVID-19 pandemic, we would have anywhere between eight and 10 production staff, sometimes more on site um, all across the world. And that's been the biggest change for us. As a company pre-pandemic, we were already making um, plans to move towards a remote production workflow. Um, so having done this, it's also given World Archery and ourselves a great opportunity to make use of these facilities and, and centralize the production. And given the ever evolving restrictions worldwide, this has worked out really well for, for both of us and it's helped add a lot of stability. Remote production is the ability to produce live broadcasts from a central production unit in one location. This means not having to be on site and anywhere in the world we can produce our coverage from that same central studio facility. I see many advantages because we save a lot on bringing people on site, so we have less trips. We also ship a lot less equipment or we have to hire it locally. Uh, therefore, it allows us to uh, be much more environmental friendly, be more sustainable and at the same time increase the quality of the product. The other thing is that we can also have more flexibility in terms of helping some of the local broadcasters with additional uh, feeds and uh, we can really maximize the output of the production. Welcome to Lausanne and welcome to the second stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup. During the event, I help link up the coordination between on-site production team and our team here in Glasgow, making sure everything we do matches up. I also liaise with our commentary team and graphics throughout. The commentary team are based in our remote production facility. After the event, I ensure everyone's happy within the post-production team, ensuring the highlights and the social media distribution has been successfully delivered. The end result's been extremely positive for us. It's allowed us to be flexible, particularly with the ongoing travel restrictions. It's also allowed consistency within commentary, graphics, distribution and the post-production process, all of which are extremely important parts of World Archery's coverage. Some of the positives within using remote production for me include reducing carbon footprint, being able to improve productivity, but also really homing in on consistency from event to event, and that's so important. 10 years ago, we couldn't really do something like this. The technology has evolved so much and allowing us to do this and no doubt improve on it. I think remote production will be a prominent fixture within the ever evolving world of sports broadcasting. To me, that's positive and it's just, yeah, it's really exciting to be a part of that and really excited also to see what more we can do within remote production in the coming years. The pressure on France to deliver Olympic team quotas on home soil in Paris is going to be exceptionally high. On a eu nos étapes de sélection en, en début d'année. Euh, L'équipe a été définie très tôt, euh, juste avant que la, la saison commence, pour toute la saison. 
et euh, je fais partie de, de l'équipe des trois qui iront au championnat d'Europe et, euh, et à Paris pour tenter de, de nous qualifier aux Jeux Olympiques. Pour le moment, on n'a pas encore nos quotas et c'est sur ces deux compétitions-là qu'on peut, on peut récupérer euh, nos places. Il a été décidé par la fédération qu'à Antalya, où les places individuelles étaient euh, à remporter, l'archer qui remporte la, le, le quota individuel ira aux Jeux Olympiques. Ouais. Il n'y a pas de, de redistribution euh, interne à l'équipe, c'est celui qui remporte la place qui, qui y va. Well, here we go, it's time to find out who are going to book the four individual places that are available at this continental quota tournament in Antalya. Now it's time for quarter-final nine for Shiro. We'll put him through. And he's put it on to the line for the 10 ring. He's shot a 10, a 27. So here we go, semi-final number one. Bring it across. It worked. Copyright against Brown. Oh, brilliant 30 when he needed it from Thomas Shiro. Let's see. Oh, look at this. This measure is so important now. Look at that. It has been marked up to a 10. And that means they both shot 30s. Eight is enough to draw level in the set points and get the one point they need to go through to the semis. Oh, an opportunity here for Valandon not only to make the final here, but we think snatch the qualification spot for the French team. A big intake. Let's have a look at how the men's finished up. Mete Gazos top of the pile, of course, and from the battling Jean Charles Valandon. C'est très difficile toujours de d'avoir un coéquipier d'équipe qui est adversaire du jour au lendemain. Mais c'est la loi du sport et la loi du tir là. One more chance to qualify in a couple of weeks' time for the teams in Paris. La pression augmente un petit peu au fur et à mesure. Après, euh, je me sers de chaque compétition pour me préparer euh, pour, pour celle-ci. Et j'ai hâte de, de, de tenter de remporter ma place là-bas. C'est un rêve depuis que j'ai commencé. Euh, ma famille me, me soutient dans, dans ce rêve depuis le tout, le, le tout début. C'est la première fois que je peux tenter de participer aux Jeux Olympiques en, en suivant tout le processus euh, qui, qui, en, qui est en place pour se qualifier. Je m'entraîne tous les jours pour euh, pour vivre cet événement à fond et j'ai jamais pensé à, à échouer. Je vais faire les choses de, de mon mieux pour ne, pour ne rien regretter et, et surtout profiter du moment, prendre plein de, de plaisir à, à tirer toutes ces flèches et pour le partager aussi avec l'équipe si, si on a la chance d'y aller par équipe. Ce serait pour moi un, un accomplissement de, de ma carrière et ce ne serait pas la fin mais ce ça serait, ça serait une belle récompense d'y participer et de remporter une médaille. Allez la France. That's all for this month's archery show. See you next time.